Borada Paub. Good morning all. I'm Rachel Bowen. I'm Director of Policy and Public Affairs here at Collega Cymru. A warm welcome to our cross-party group on FE and Future Skills. This is the first meeting of our cross-party group this Senedd. We're currently still waiting for our chair, our current chair, John Griffiths, to arrive. But that's OK, because I've got a few housekeeping things that I need to run you all through anyway. So firstly, relax. Your mics are off. Your cameras are off. If you're still having your breakfast or your mid-morning coffee or you're not quite ready for your working day, but you've joined our CPG anyway, not a problem. We can't see you, but you can see us. We need to do some formalities because this is our first cross-party group. So we need to agree a chair and we need to agree a secretariat. The good news is that John Griffiths is happy to continue as chair and also Collega Cymru is happy to continue as the secretariat. So what we really need is for somebody to use the chat function to say that they're happy with that. So I can just see that Luke Fletcher, thanks Luke, who's economy spokesperson supplied, has nominated John Griffiths. Um, if somebody could nominate Collega Cymru as a secretariat, then that will take care of our formalities and our cross-party group will be set up and good to go. Thanks, Luke. That's brilliant. That takes care of all the formalities in terms of us carrying on as a group. Fantastic. So um, we're still waiting for John, but I'm going to hand over in a moment to the first of our speakers. If you've got any comments or questions, please do use the chat bar. You're welcome to submit your questions or your comments in Welsh or English. If they're in Welsh, we have somebody who can translate them so the panel can engage with them and answer the questions. So please do feel free to use both languages and please do you know, keep the, the interactive side of the session going via the questions and via kind of any comments you may have. So, I'm going to now hold hand over to Robin Landman from the Black FE Leadership Group, who's going to do the first presentation. And when John arrives, I'm sure that he'll have a few words that he wants to hand and uh, wants to add. But yeah, over to you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, and good morning, everybody. It's a real delight for me to be here representing the Black FE Leadership Group. And as most of you will know by now, we've just concluded a really important partnership with Colliga Cymru, which we're delighted with, and uh, our meeting uh, with the, the uh, well, our, our meeting last week when the, the, the partnership was launched was graced by the presence of Jane Hutt, uh, Minister for Social Justice, and uh, she said some very kind things about us. So I'll just give you a, a very brief outline of the, the activities of the Black FE Leadership Group uh, in the past year or so. Uh, we're a very young organisation, uh, we announced our presence on the FE sector nationally uh, with a, an open letter which was published in, in August last year. And uh, that was a fairly robustly worded open letter. Those of you who had a chance to look at it would, would uh, acknowledge that, but it was necessary. Uh, and like many uh, organisations around the globe, one of the, the uh, important factors in making us uh, so we're robust in our language was the, the, the murder of George Floyd, which really gave a, a boost to anti-racism globally, not just uh, yeah, nationally. Uh, so, so, suffice to say that the, the open letter generated a fair amount of, of interest and the responses uh, were necessarily supportive. I think very few people at that stage were willing to say they didn't agree with the, the content of our open letter. And uh, that, that, that set us off on a, a really a high and int intensive period of activity, uh, working with um, a whole range of organizations uh, throughout the first of our, our three months of existence. And the highlight of the first three months of our activity in the English sector, at least, was the fact that we were nominated as FE People of the Year by uh, by the Times Educational Supplement, which we found gratifying, but it also raised the profile of, uh, of anti-racism in FE uh, across the four nations. And part of that, uh, the result of that, was that we began discussions with Collega Kamri. Uh, and I have to say that the response from that organization has been fantastic. Very, very open discussions 
have led in a very short space of time to concluding uh, a partnership agreement uh, and that was officially launched as I said last week. We've also concluded a partnership agreement with uh, AOC, the Association of Colleges. It took a bit longer but uh, it was also much welcomed by us and subsequent to those discussions and, and alongside them uh, we, we engaged in a, a whole range of activities. The highlight of that was the the uh, inaugural Black FE Leadership Conference in February of this year. And that conference was a great success. Uh, it, it really catapulted us into uh, the national stage. Uh, and that was followed by other activities like Thought Le Leadership, uh, a symposium that we, we did in partnership with the Education and Training Foundation and a whole range of other activities. But Alongside all this, colleagues, it was important for us to establish a strong and vibrant membership, because without that, we aren't, we aren't, uh, we don't have the credibility. Uh, and one of the things that's been gratifying for us is that our growing membership has been supportive, extremely supportive of the activities that the executive team have undertaken. Now. At that conference in February, we also launched the 10 point plan diagnostic toolkit. And that's our contribution, that's our gift to the FE sector nationally. Uh, and since that toolkit was launched, we've had a huge response from FE colleges, but beyond that with national organizations uh, and others. Now we've, we've had a great response, but what was telling was for us that one of the earliest adopters of our 10 point plan diagnostic toolkit was my, my, my co-panelist today, Mike James uh, at Cardiff and Vale College. Uh, and Mike was kind enough to share some feedback about training that his staff, he and his staff had last week. And I'm sure he might mention that later. But we've had subsequent to Mike and uh, Cardiff and Vale's uh, affiliation, we've had uh, colleague, uh, Cumry, uh, colleague, uh, sorry, colleague Gwent affiliating as well. So a great start to our partnership in Wales. And I think one of the things that I'd like to, to conclude my opening remarks on here is that almost uniquely amongst the four nations, the Welsh Government is committed to an anti-racist Wales by 2030. My colleagues, that's a huge ambition for a country to have. But it's something that we are more than happy to work on in, in partnership with Colega Cymru and the Welsh Government. Because that statement of intent is so heartening to people like us. Now, our raison d'etre is anti-racism. And when you're, when you're working hand in glove with a government that has that shared ambition, it really is a strong steer about what we can achieve together. Uh, we're not a party political organization, but to be honest, it would be lovely for us if we were working in a similar way with the English government, but that may, may come to pass. But anyway, thank you very much. I'll, I look forward to the panel discussion later. And I'll hand you back, hand you back to, to Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Robin. That was a really good overview with some impressive work so far. I'm pleased to see that our chair, John Griffiths, has arrived. John, you'll be pleased to know that in your absence, you've been re-nominated as chair. So that's the danger of not actually being here on time. But you're now, you are the, uh, the chair of the cross-party group on FE and future skills. I'm not sure whether you want to do the introduction that you would have done had you been able to join us at the start or whether you want us to carry on to Catherine. But John, do you want to say a few words? You're on mute. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, I'm sort of squatting in an office here. so. If somebody comes along and drags me off at uh, some stage, apologies. I'm actually in the uh, empty office next door to ours, but we won't go into the story. But um, no, it, it's great to um, be able to join you and sorry about those difficulties. I think, um, you know, we all know we've got a lot of work to do to create the sort of Wales we want to see in terms of equality and inclusion. And um, we have got some important work in train to Welsh Government. 
But I think, you know, what Welsh Government really wants, and I'm sure Jane had, has said and would say this, is for all the major players, as it were, in life in Wales, in, in all spheres and sectors, to step up to the plate and, you know, acknowledge the issues and do something about them. Because we hear from, I think, our ethnic minority communities rightly and very strongly that, you know, they, they've sort of had enough of reports and, um, you know, initiatives and projects and, you know, they, they want to see action, they want to see necessary change. And for that to happen, we do need further education and, and the skills sector, you know, to come forward and say, you know, we're going to play our part. And so I think today is just hugely welcome. Um, because it is showing that willingness and that engagement. And, um, you know, we know the proof of the pudding will, will be in the eating as ever. And, you know, it'll be the change that takes place and the action that happens that, you know, that really counts. But uh, I think today is really, really welcome. And, uh, you know, as chair of the, the old party group on further education and skills, I'm very pleased to see this meeting taking place today. And I look forward to working with you on the agenda. That's great. Thanks, John. Before I hand over to Catherine to tell us about some great work that's going on in Addis Gordon and Cymru Adult Learning Wales, just a reminder to everybody to feel free to comment in the chat or to start putting any questions in that you may have for the panel. But over to you, Catherine. Thank you. Rachel, Good morning, everybody. Absolutely delighted to be here this morning and really pleased to be able to speak about some of our work at Addisk Oidolion Cymru Adult Learning Wales with the National Community College and Voluntary Movement for Adult Community Learning in Wales. So in terms of our approaches, um, we really went back to basics. And um, as the Chief Executive, it's important that I took um, time to understand um, the issues, the barriers and the challenges in relation to, to um, race equality and creating an anti-racism um, approach, essentially. So I started with my own attitudes and um, what I found from the discussions that I was having with um, a number of people um, from black and minority ethnic groups uh, across Wales, um, including some of our learners, some of our associates, our partners and our staff, is that it's not enough to have policies and procedures and it's not enough to actually rely on the fact that they are in place without challenging the assumption that they're actually working and they're actually being effective. So when it came to understanding that issue, um, I did talk to a number of people to test our policies as an organisation. And what I found from those discussions is that we've got more work to do and we had more work to do. White supremacy was clear uh, within the discussions that I was having. Um, some of the experiences that colleagues and associates were having uh, in 2021 were alarming, including um, very uh, high profile um, academics who were revered by their peers within their academic uh, environment, but not provided with a seat on a train or a bus or spoken to very slowly uh, in a supermarket checkout because the assumption was that English wasn't their first language. Other, others that I spoke to expressed concern over having to be prepared for adult life as a child to understand the challenges of assumptions and accusations being made because of the colour of their skin. And this particularly related to engagement and um, interaction with um, officials and, and uh, members of the police. Um, so it was it was quite a uh, um, it, it it was quite a, a, a an alarming situation for me to understand and appreciate that people around me that I know very very well were still experiencing these issues. And it dawned on me that 
again having the policies and the procedures in place are just simply not enough you can you 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 almost become complacent because you sit back and you think right job done tick box exercise done and and it simply isn't the case so I set about as chief executive to really uh, embed a culture of um, inclusivity within the organization and to start challenging um, our approaches and our attitudes. We have taken an approach where we are action oriented. We don't have strategies. We don't have action plans collecting dust on paper whether that be electronic or, or real paper. We take the opportunity to gather people together regularly. So when it came to having the opportunity to um, participate in the consultation for um, the fantastic work that Welsh Government's doing around anti-racist anti Wales, we gathered people together from black and minority ethnic groups to have a discussion about this and our feedback was very real. It was hearing from people who were living it, who were experiencing racism, who were experiencing race hatred and it was an opportunity to present to Welsh Government a very real and a very powerful response to the consultation. We also ensure that um, those 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 stories and those experiences are shared with every member of staff who are, who are join the organization so i induct myself every member of staff we cover off um, our values and our attitudes towards inclusivity whether that be race or any other of the uh, protected characteristics within the equality act and we reinforce that through um, forums, focus groups, strategic planning days. We have regional forums with members of um, our uh, regional areas, including our members, our branches, members of staff, friends, associates. We have a management team meeting every term where we um, revisit our values and we invite people to talk about their experiences. So our approach to this is to really reinforce the message and test that we are actually doing what we are saying we are doing, because it's really, really important. From the experiences that we see and from um, what we can, we've, we've observed, it would appear that people are happy and confident and feel safe to speak up. Because again, we would question if nothing was happening. Um, you know, it's, it's impossible to get everything right because it's impossible to understand and to um, anticipate people's personal views on things and people say things and do things that perhaps don't fall in line with our um, values and our attitudes as an organisation. So we do um, have and have experienced uh, people's um, confidence to speak up. We've invested greatly in staff CPD and as mentioned earlier on we have worked with um, organisations who can really come in and give a very powerful message um, based on real life experiences. So we have worked with Race Council Cymru who have uh, delivered our CPD programme for staff. We're also signed up as a College of Sanctuary and we work with many, many partners, include, including the Ethnic Minorities and Youth Support Wales organisation, North Wales African Society, and of course, Race Council Cymru. We've taken a proactive approach to our recruitment, both of staff and onto our governing body. And I'm pleased to say that our stats have really, really improved now um, in, in terms of um, representatives from black uh, minority ethnic groups um, coming in currently at 7.24%, which is um, well above the, the, the average for Wales at 4.9%. 
Um, stats don't mean a huge amount, I know, um, but it does give some indication. We were around about the 4% mark this time last year. So there has been a real push around that. And uh, we're very pleased to be able to report that. So those are just some of our, our approaches that we've taken as an organisation. And I hope that's helpful. Diolch fawr iawn. Thank you. Thanks very much, Catherine. And it's great to see the practical and proactive approach and the difference it's already making. I'm going to hand over now to our final speaker, who's Chief Exec of Cardiff and Vale College, Mike James. And then after that, John will chair the Q&A. So please do keep your questions coming. Over to you, Mike. Thank you. OK, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me OK? Can you hear me OK? Yes. Yeah, OK, okay good. Thank you. OK, so um, if I just start off with a little bit of context. Um, we're a large FE college uh, in South East Wales, and, and we work through Cardiff in the Vale. Um, there's about 14% of the population around us are BAME, um, but as a college, we recruit about 30% of our students are BAME. So it was absolutely vital that uh, we were early adapters in trying to move forward and uh, try and change the status quo. Um, we've got about uh, 35,000 enrollments, 1,200 staff, and a turnover of 110 million. So, Technically, um, we're, we're, we're a large organisation, and if we couldn't do something in Cardiff and the Vale, then nobody could. So just briefly, my journey, um, I've experienced with family members uh, who've experienced uh, racism in Wales. And um, after reading, I suppose, the, um, the declaration on race equality and the changes the, the Welsh Government were making to create um, an anti-racist Wales by 2030, I thought I was compelled to take better action as a leader of a large FE institution. But quite simply, I think for me, not being racist was far too passive in 2021. I needed to again raise my game, as Jane had said, and step up to the plate and adopt a position of anti-racist, moving the narrative for me from passive to active. So I turned to the BFELG to for support, uh, guidance and help. Anti-racism in my mind is clear, it's a verb, it's a doing word. The verb should give one a clue that things need to change. So what we did was really, in, what I'm doing is in three simple phases. So the first phase is to work with the BFELG as an early adapter to create a safe place for change using a 10-point action plan so that we've got an ambitious post-16 organisation that can create uh, deep-rooted systematic change programmes so that we can actually create naturally occurring a sustainable race equality that supports the Bain community in Cardiff and the Vale, but also the wider South East Wales. I'm very proud to say that our college has now been affiliated with the BFLG, as Robin's already indicated, the first in Wales. And we've had our initial induction and training management um, last Friday. It was a day, and Amjit uh, took us through that. And we're waiting for our responses on the 16th of December. That, that, that response will form the spine of our quality change plan. I think we'll work through over the next 36 months within our strategic and operational machinery. We've currently got EDIM measures. We've pretty much won every single award um, for working with uh, equality and diverse communities, but simply, it simply was not enough. We needed to, as John said, step up to the plate and really push it. So phase two, uh, which was about working um, broadly with colleges Wales and uh, across Pound Wales, was to ask Colleg Cymru um, to raise the race equality agenda and request that Colleg Cymru affiliate to the BFLG, which they've done, and seek a like-minded chief executive to work alongside me um, within their institution on a similar journey. So I requested that College Cymru set up a subgroup so the principals to lead on race equality. I can now report all three of these actions have been completed. I've spoken both the chair and chief executive of College Cymru who are now fully on board and endorse the setting up of the subgroup within the principals network. It's also no surprise that um, a colleague went under the leadership of Guy Lacey have also jumped at the chance to work with the BFLG, as Robin's always in, uh, also indicated. So phase three for me is, is the bit where we really can get excited, because if we are able to set up this sub-equality race group, um, we can then invite BAME elected members from the individual colleges to, re to represent their communities, having a voice at the top table, a voice to change that supports the notion of a safe space collectively working so that all, I mean, all post-16 FE providers in Wales affiliate the BFEG by Easter of 2022. It's simply not good enough that we, um, we lip sync this. We need to join up and we need to have critical friends on boards. 
I think colleges would join as affiliated members, members do the training, do the training and be supported in the change needed by the race equality subgroup. If we could do this, it would be the first nation in the UK to achieve such a thing. What a statement for Wales, what a massive boost for race equality in post-16 in Wales to be leading, not following. I think the group in the first year are working across Pan Wales should do four simple things. Identify the baseline data and research that enable us to define in post-16 Wales the attainment gaps and barriers for BAME students. Start to build a more diverse and talent pipeline across all levels of workforce and governance in the wealth FC sector, supporting BAME succession and, implement and uh, integration into our workforce. To start building the capacity for ensuring sustainable positive change across the whole FE sector, work with a range of critical friends, for example, the BFELG, and also to try and secure development funding for the implementation of points one to three over the first three years. So for me, I'm a very practical person, and practically that's what we've done, and that's what we're going to do. And I'm absolutely delighted to say that my colleagues, who I'm working with, are fully supportive of what we're trying to do. So that's really what we've done so far. Well, that's great. Thanks, Mike. And um, that takes us nicely into the, the Q&A session, I think, Rachel, doesn't it? And we have had some questions posted in, in the chat. The first one is, how do we best address the lack of black teachers and practitioners in further education? Um, who would like to begin on, on that? Is that you, Mike? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, can, I can jump in. I mean, if you, if you just, just reflect on what I've said in terms of um, setting up the race equality group in Pan Wales, I think we need to start by looking at the data and finding out where, what the evidence actually says. Uh, and then if we can do that uh, and look at the attainment gaps and gaps we've got, we can then start to build, as I've already said, this, this more diverse pipeline across Wales by the actions that fall out of that. And I think having elected members from each college who are BAME inside the group, um, with their voice, their views, I think it would it would enrich it and it would drive the process to change far faster than simply having it done from the top down. So I think it's about engagement of the BAME community at that local level to find out what we could do better, what we're not doing, and how we can change process, policies, procedures in inside our colleges to be able to support people um, in, into the institutions. I think we could do better role models make it easier for people, um, demystify how, you know, what colleges do, and really push the boat out here, enabling us to do that. And I, to be quite honest, you starting with the BFE, the BFLEG yeah, is the best place to start. They're an authoritative group. They're very well reversed. They've got great membership. They're very versed in this. And what we should do, we should lean on them in the first three years for support to push us forward. Thank you very much, Mike. That's very clear. Robin? Uh, thanks, thanks, John, uh, and thanks, Mike. I think this is a really critical uh, question, uh, and partly this, I think, is why the, the partnership with Colega Cymru and Bakapi Leadership Group has been established, because uh, with our hope, I hope our assistance, uh, we can give some guidance on how best to achieve this. I think the key thing, and I think all of the, everybody on the panel would agree with this, is the culture's got to be right. People have got to feel that they're going to be welcome if they apply for a job. And we, we know, history tells us, that immigrant communities and now you know, established black communities in the UK value education very highly. So there will be no shortages of applicants if they believe that there will be a welcoming environment for them to go into and that their talents will truly be, be uh, recognized and that uh, you know, the only the only barrier to their progression would be their own ability. I think that's the key issue. Uh, I think there's somebody who's uh, talked about in, in the chat about uh, the fact that there's only one black person on this uh, discussion. Uh, that's a statement of where we're starting from. That's not, a, that's not a statement of our ambition. We're working towards a proper representation, but we have to start honestly with the, where we're at today. And uh, you know, I think for, for the important thing is that we can't achieve this by looking backwards. We have to just say, this is our goal. 2030 is the end date for us to actually have a sensible review. But nobody believes 
that everything will be uh, uh, hunky-dory in 2030. What we want to see is real progress. Okay, thank you. Catherine? Just picking up on the points that Robin made and, and what was in the chat there about representation, um, it was interesting actually because when I was um, establishing um, and getting to grips with my own attitudes towards anti-racism, it's almost like impo imposter syndrome because there I am, a white middle-aged woman attempting to understand the issues and the challenges of what it is to be um, a member of, of the black and minority ethnic communities in, in Wales. And the answer I got is, which I think is pertinent to, the, to the, the comments being made, it's white people that have got the problem, it's white people that need to sort it out. So the fact that we have got a majority of white people here today trying to sort this issue out perhaps could be viewed as, as quite a positive move. In, in relation to the question about um, encouraging more teachers and practitioners um, from BAME communities, then there's a huge amount of work to do. We need to understand the issues. As an organisation, we believe we're being really, really proactive. We are demonstrating ourselves as far as possible to be inclusive and welcoming, and yet we still are not getting the level of applications into jobs within the organisation that we would like to see. So we will be liaising more so with women and with colleagues who have got expertise, who've got real life experiences, who can share practices and, and, and demonstrate how we can really get into, into communities to ensure that we, we do our utmost to, to, to get that representation because there's something going wrong and we need to understand it. So the partnership engagement is really important. Uh, as, as Monica and Robin have already said. Thank you very much, Catherine. Okay, um, the second question we have um, posted is what role do learners have and how do we better empower them to develop an understanding of their own values, beliefs and cultures and those of others? Who would like to start um, um, hopefully a set of answers um, to that question. Catherine? Sorry, oh, Dom, can, you say that, can you say that again? It, it was you, you, you lost, we lost the um, transmission, sorry. All right, okay, it's what role do learners have and how do we better empower them to develop an understanding of their own values, beliefs and cultures and those of others? Okay. Okay, Catherine? Yeah. I think it, it, it all starts with, with imparting information very early on in a learner's journey, certainly with our, with our organisation. Um, we do really um, apply um, um, democracy throughout everything that we do. Our consultation with learners is, is very rich and very engaging. So um, many of our learners do shape their own curriculum. They do shape their own... Um, ways of learning and um, within that we are um, incorporating aspects of our curriculum that really do allow learners to speak about their experiences and to empower them um, to, to really um, share and, and um, appreciate people's values and beliefs. So it's very much about having an open forum for that uh, and a safe place uh, where, where learners can feel confident to, to, to speak up. So again, engagement, engagement, engagement. We need to continue to talk about this. We need to ensure that, that it's, a, it's a very um, uh, understood and um, um, uh, relaxed environment where people can do that. Thank you very much, Catherine. Either Michael, do you want to add anything? Yeah, just that um, I, I fully agree, I agree with what Catherine's saying. And for us, I mean, 30% of our students in the full-time cohort are BAME. And we've got student counsellors, we've got student reps who are based inside the groups and they feed back through to the student officers. So we've got the, they say it's about consultation and doing that. But for me, I suppose one of the bigger challenges is this, is to say, well, if you look at the amount of um, BAME students in FE in Wales, and then you look at the same figure of BAME students in FE in work-based learning, um, it's it's less than five percent. I think so. I think if you if you look, if you listen to the feedback 
as institutions, we need to work harder to make sure that apprenticeships are open to the Bain community because currently it seems to be um, a little bit of a mystique for them. And I think there's, there's, a, there's a huge own goal there. And I think we could do more uh, as a sector to make sure apprenticeships are the number one choice for the BAME, uh, for BAME students rather than just ESOL or low level courses. There's no reason why they shouldn't be doing electrical, mechanical, engineering stuff or aeronautical uh, like every else. And um, we need to work hard with that. We've got a 40 million pound work based learning contract and we're absolutely on it, and it's we're something that we're determined to do because it's not just about full-time effort, it's about the work-based learning part, which is always the golden the golden standard, which we need to work harder on. Okay, thanks, Mike. Again, that's, that's very useful. Uh, Robin? Um, yeah, thanks, John. Um, what, I'd like to sort of I'd just have to adjust the question a bit, really, because it's also the role of colleges to help learners to develop their values and their beliefs and understanding of cultures other than those uh, of, uh, of cultures other than their own uh, and in, a, in a, an environment a world that we're in which is dominated by social media a lot of our learners come with with uh, preconceptions which they get from uh, unreliable sources and it's our role as educators to give them the, the proper grounding the proper information that enables them to make the right choices for their own lives, but also to value the contribution of others around them. So it's really important for us to, to get to grips with this. Uh, uh, there is a question that's come up in the, the, um, the chat, and, and, and that's something which is important to us as the BF, BFLG. Using terms like BAME and BME are not conducive to making people feel inclusive. Those are terms which are are administrative shortcuts and uh, yeah, we use the term black as an inclusive definition so black is a, a term that we use to describe people from different ethnicities who have a common experience a common lived experience of racism i think that that's a, a nuance but it's an important one because it, it changes the relationship between uh, the, the majority community and you know, the so-called minority community. It's not helpful. I'll give you one thing, one example from my own life experience. I grew up as a child in South Africa, a country which is overwhelmingly black. I never once heard a white person describe themselves as an ethnic minority, mm -hmm. never once. And that was a function of the relationship they thought they had, yeah? And that's what we've got to take in mind. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Robin. Um, we, we've got um, a further question posted. What role do local communities and education leaders have in achieving an anti-racist Wales? Um, who would like to, I know, I know we've, um, we've covered um, some of the ground in, in answering this question, but I guess um, local communities and the way that, you know, um, institutions in get engage with them is very significant isn't it if we want to have that wider cultural change and you know that wider set of more progressive attitudes and um, understandings um who, who would like to start on that catherine so one of the things that we did to try and um ensure that we brought communities together and there was a better understanding of of, of um culture and and uh, all aspects of, of life uh, and living in Wales. Um, we brought, we brought, we've brought groups of, of learners together. So there's the learner engagement uh, aspect of it, but there's also the community aspect of it. And one of the examples I'd like to share with you was a group of learners that we, um, we were supporting in Grangetown in Cardiff. Um, they, uh, I will unfortunately, refer to them as, 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 as a community of black, a predominantly black, Asian and minority ethnic um, individuals. Um, and we, um, through their tutor, um, we brought them together with a group of learners in Ebu Vale, who were predominantly white and Welsh, very, very different um, understanding of, of differences in, in, in cultures and so forth. And there was some um anxiousness around 
that, particularly from the white Ebba Vale group as it stands, as to whether or not there would be um, a positive interaction between these two groups. So we used food to bring them together. Um, we used uh, the different um, approaches to preparing food, the different dishes, different cultures associated with that. And it was a fantastic event. It was a fantastic day. They ended up, the two groups, um, writing recipes together, publishing a recipe book. And, and we have repeated that type of activity across the organisation. So it does so many things, breaks down barriers, um, it, 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 it addresses um, uh, misconceptions, brings communities together, and it forms friendships, which is fantastic as well. Thank you very much, Catherine. Um, Michael or Robin? Mike, you're muted at the moment. Yeah, you, you asked the direct question, what is our role? Well, our role as strategic leaders is to be at the forefront of the anti-racist Wales campaign uh, to get there by 12, 20, 30. And for us, it shouldn't be a choice. Um, we're using government money to run these organisations, these institutions. The Welsh Government are, are, are supporting this and asking us to do this. We should all get on with it. We should be leading it, not following it. I think we should do that at a strategic level. And I think what we need to do is all collectively come together as a group of FE leaders and pledge to sign up for the BFALG um, uh, adoption, because not be scared of, the, um, uh, of what it will look like when they look at our strategic plans in a, in a safe place and to work together to create real movement uh, in post-16 across the, across the piece, to move the rump of post-16 up and move it forward. Perhaps it's a little bit easier for us because my office is literally 100 metres from Butetown. As I said before, 30% of my children are from the, um, uh, the BAME community. But it shouldn't just be Cardiff and the Vale. It needs to be the whole of Wales. And we need to come together strategic leaders and lead this anti-racist approach. And I think um, it, would be, um, it would be disrespectful if we didn't, if I'm really honest with you, uh, Chair. OK, thank, thanks, Mike. Um, Robin, did you want to add anything or...? Uh, very briefly, I, I would say that I mean, the, the, one of the core messages from the BFELG is that anti-racism elevates all of us. It's not just elevating black mm -hmm. communities. And uh, uh, Catherine's uh, um, uh, yeah, recollection of what she, they did in her organisation is, 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 is very compelling. People have more in common than that which separates them. Mm -hmm. And when we break down barriers and we find out those, those common factors, that, that bind us together, it's much easier to get together. You know, what we, what we have to, to, to fight against is siloing people based on arbitrary uh, differences. And uh, I think that's one of the, part, one of the, one of the strengths of the, the commitment from the government in, in Wales, is that with, your, with, the, with the power of government behind organisations like further education colleges, uh, as Mike says, there should be no option but to, to get on, on onto the, your bandwagon and to make sure it's achieved and achieved you know, successfully. Okay, thanks Robin. Um, another question then is what role do learners have and how do we better empower them to develop an understanding of their own values, beliefs and cultures and those of others, which we've already um, mm. um, dealt with actually, haven't we? Um, what else we've got? Um, yeah, the curriculum in Wales then. How does anti-racism get pushed and embedded? Um, and it's not enough simply to include this at the pastoral level within colleges. Um, in terms of the curriculum, obviously, what was government and um, the, the different um, agencies that, uh, that help uh, have got prime responsibility. But any, anybody like to offer yeah. an... Uh, yeah, Mike? Um, oh. Part of the 10 point action plan you go through with the, with the BFELG is, uh, without doing a spoiler, is to take your organisation through a full curriculum review and to see whether or not it fits or supports the, um, the communities you're serving. And that probably for me is one of the best things that's going to come out of it. So um, in the new year, we're going to get all of our curriculum, both uh, the work-based learning and the FE bit, and we're going to give it a good shake and make sure it supports uh, our communities, but more importantly, offers entry points and opportunities for all our community 
to progress and gain high level skills at the pace they want to in an individual way. So um, for anybody who goes through the BFE LG, sorry to sound like a, uh, a particle of all crap here, but anybody who goes to the BFE LG training will find one of the first things that pops up is your curriculum. The curriculum, the guts of your organization needs a full review. And that's what we're going to do. Thank you very much, Mike. Anything, Robin, Catherine? I think for us, I think Mike makes really good points there about, you know, a curriculum review and so forth. But, you know, it, it's important that we we get on with things as well. So I think at, at the same time that we are reviewing our curriculum and we're planning our curriculum around this really, really important agenda that, you know, we're investing in, in, in staff CPD, that there is there is a, a, um, a prerequisite that everything that we do through our curriculum delivery we have these messages embedded in them and we are reinforcing the importance of um creating not just an anti-racist racist wales but just far more positive attitudes to inclusivity generally you know it just makes perfect sense to be doing it so the, the, that, that's the approach that we're taking is, is, is it goes without saying that everything that we do, we are continuing questioning ourselves and challenging ourselves. And again, I would come back to that point, challenge the assumptions, do not assume, do not assume it's dangerous to do so. Okay, Th thank you very much. Um, there is a question as well, um, directly for Catherine and Mike, as to how you have been how you've gauged the views and experiences of your learners um, that, you know, obviously it's important to um, deal with staff issues, but that student of experience of racism that need, needs to be explored. Yeah, I'll jump in there. I mean, um, in terms of um, experiencing the views of students, we do it at the start, when they start college, in the middle and at the end. So we do it three times throughout the year. And also we've got um, uh, what they call access points for students who experience any, any type of um, uh, racism or any type of um, actually sort of um, anything that uh, they're not like. They can access into the college and report and sit in a safe place and we explain it through and we can investigate and do all that. So students have the opportunity to be able to do that. But for me, um, just, just, just sort of segue just a little bit back into the last point was that um, Yes, we could do it ourselves. Yes, we've done it ourselves. But what we haven't done, we haven't done it with a critical friend sitting on our shoulder. And what I wanted was the BFLD to be our critical friend in a safe place to say to us, that's OK, Mike, but actually, what about this? What about that? What about this? And that's the best way of, having, of doing it with a critical friend in a safe way sitting on your shoulder. And we do a similar thing for students three times in the year. Yeah, for us, that critical friend is really important as well. We, we you know, we're working, as I said, with, with lots of organisations to support us in this. Um, but what we found from things like student learner surveys and, and you know, um, gathering views from learners in more traditional ways is I think there's an element of masking going on. We know we've got racism, you know, it's, it's, it's everywhere. So we know it's there. So if the results of, of, of any engagement activities are telling you that there is no suggestion of any racism, then if it looks too good to be true, then it's too good to be true. So, you know, again, we've got to take those further steps to really create safe spaces for people to really talk about what's really going on. And that's what we're endeavouring to do within our organisation. Okay, thank you both very much. There's an interesting question here that refers to the preface of the Race Equality Action Plan, referring to the power of movements and challenge in building dialogue uh, and asking how we can secure a space for that, for constructive challenge in, in Welsh institutions. Um, any thought, thoughts on that? Robin, do, would you like to kick off on that? I'm, 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 uh, I feel I'm on dangerous ground here, but I'll, I'll give, <laughs> right. give it a go. I think, I think um, part of this is about, you know, this comes back to the question also in the, the comment in the chat about decolonisation. You know, that's a, yeah. a, a, a big word. Mm. Uh, but 
What the government has done has said, we want to achieve an anti-racist world by uh, at the 2030. And my view is that if that's your ambition, then you have to do a fundamental review of the curriculum to, to find out to what extent the curriculum has been part of the problem. Uh, because the curriculum was, yeah, has been structured over the years to present a particular picture of, mm. of the world uh, that's, uh, as, it's, as perceived from either the Welsh or the, the British uh, context. And if we want to achieve an anti-racist uh, world, then that the curriculum has to be part of changing preconceptions about what's you know, right and what's what's different, uh, and and that is a really big thing. I I, I don't really like the, the, the term decolonization. I prefer modernization because it's about achieving the aim that we want, which is an inclusive environment for all learners to know enough about the past, to learn from mistakes of the past, but also to have an open end, an open view of what society could be in the future. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a no, it's a it's a well established uh, fact that if you don't know your history, mm. then you're, you you risk making the same mistakes over and over again. So. Yeah. I suppose that's my initial response, uh, John. Yeah, no, th thanks very much for that, Robin. It's a really useful context to mm. look at it in. Thank you. Um, either Michael or Catherine? I mean, I mean, I, I think, I, I, without trying to turn this into a sort of like a middle-class intellectual exercise, I mean, I'm what I'm trying to t tackle is, is my experience of racism has been, for example, um, being on the tube with my, fr my friend who's Gujarati, both having rucksacks on, he gets stopped, I don't. My niece, for example, who's half African, Caribbean, half Asian, walking down the street in Krakow and getting spat at and told to go home. Mm -hmm. um, my friend who's um, Sikh walking in the pub with me and somebody whistling, um, has anybody ordered a taxi? That is my experience of racism with my friends and family. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, decolonization and the history of our country, yeah, is something I can't, I can't, I can't change and I can't get at. But what I can do, um, in my little world, in the post-16 world, I can work with my colleagues, I can create a subgroup, I can work with critical friends, and I can change the deal for staff and students in our organisations. And I think what we should do is change the stuff in a positive way we can change and get on with that. And that's what I intend to do. So that is my direct answer to you, Chair. Uh, uh, no, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, as ever, we need to come at it from both ends of the spectrum, I guess, don't we? You know, the the, um, the more philosophical and perhaps, mm. as you say, intellectual um, aspects, but also what people really want to see, practical change driven on the ground. But to some extent, of course, they, they go together in, in any event. Okay, well, listen, thanks very much. We've just about reached the end of our time for the, the Q&A session. Rachel, I don't know, did you want to say anything at this at this stage? Um, I'll leave it to you to kind of wrap everything up. But yeah, just to emphasise that this is very much the start of the process, that we're looking forward to actually getting stuff done in the partnership between the Black FE Leadership Group and Carrega Cymru. We know that we've got lots to learn. This is just the beginning. We know that terminology and language are important. We won't always get everything right, but we will look to do better in the future. We will make mistakes along the way, but we are absolutely committed to doing better and playing our part in progressing an anti-racist Wales. So I think, yeah, back to you, John. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, you know, I just think, you know, in summary, really, that um, it's an obvious thing to say, but if Wales is really going to succeed as a country, you know, economically, socially, culturally, it needs to draw on the talents, the abilities, the energies of all of its people, regardless of social class, regardless of race, ethnicity, um, religion, sexuality, gender. You know, it, it, it's an obvious thing to say, but we're still a long way from achieving that. Um, so, you know, I really welcome today's discussion because it's an important part of getting to grips with that agenda, isn't it? And I think we've heard some very powerful points, some very strong commitment, um, you know, and obviously we need to see that follow through now. And um, I know all of you and everybody in this meeting will be, you know, taking a keen interest to make sure that it is followed through 
and we do need, you know, we do see the change that's necessary. So thank you all very much for being part of the meeting. I think it is a really, you know, useful and important meeting to have. And, you know, these matters perhaps haven't been discussed that much in, in FE and, and skills in the past. So, you know, there, there is a lot of progress to be made and a, a lot of um, benefit from, from having this sort of meeting because it, it does fill a gap, I think. Okay, well, listen, thank you all very much. Um, great to be in a meeting with you and good luck in the future. I look forward to working with you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye then. It's done. Bye.